A popular model for estimating credit risk is Moody's KMV model. Um, and this model uh, has really become a commercialization of what is better known in academia as the Merton model. And the Merton model sets out the following, Merton 1974. Okay, so basically Merton, uh, using option theory, set out a number of insights that uh, helps us provide uh, estimates of default risk or the risk of non-payment. So this is um, this type of analysis is important for fixed income and for uh, bond markets and um, that's Moody's link uh, bond rating as well. So basically uh, the idea that Merton set out was that if we consider the equity of a company uh, the payoff to the owner the shareholders position is really an option and we could consider looking at uh, a company and saying that the company has assets and the company has liabilities which would be its debt and the value of a company's equity is really the assets in excess of liabilities. So for instance if the value of the assets of a company fall below the value of its liabilities or what it owes then the company passes over to, to the creditors and the shareholders uh, don't have any positive value but shareholders are protected by limited liability. So uh, shareholders, equity holders generally are protected because of that protection, don't uh, are not exposed to assets falling below a particular level. So once assets drop and fall below the value of the company's liabilities, then the company falls into the hands of uh, creditors and the shareholders then, if you like, wash their hands so they have that protection. Okay, so that's a key insight. And it allows us to postulate a number of different uh, formulations. Um, also, we would say if we look at the position of the debt holders, uh, we could decompose or we could deconstruct their position into two positions. So if, if you lend money, you have the liability, so it's a fixed amount of of money, fixed amount of um, assets, which we could say is a, if isolated on its own, could be thought of as a risk free type asset. And then also you have the uh, equivalent of a guarantee on those assets. So, or a put option. And that becomes a little bit clearer. So, if I have lent at 80,000 euros uh, to company, I'm guaranteed to get those that 80,000 euros back. But in the event that the value of the company's assets drop below those liabilities, then once the shareholders relinquish ownership of the company and pass over to creditors in the event of bankruptcy, the what the creditor zone right is equivalent to the company's assets so okay you you could say the company has a risk free asset like that that's the payoff um however what if the company's assets drop below the value of its liabilities then the creditors the ownership of the company passes because of bankruptcy the ownership of the company passes from the shareholders to the creditors and then the creditors take up this is the value of their position so we could think of this as two positions one a risk-free asset as such and then we could think of the we could think of the uh, the um, 
creditor is also having a put option, but a short put option. Okay, so um, so if you're a creditor uh, or you're a bank that lends money to a company or you're a bondholder, uh, your position is one, uh, a risk-free asset equivalent to L. So this L here we could copy. Copy and we could paste. So we could think of L uh, sitting here. Okay, so you own uh, an asset worth uh, whatever, 100,000 or 80,000 euros. <clears throat> but you also have a put option on the company's assets. And as the value of the company's assets fall below those liabilities, you incur the losses sustained on the position. So if we were to combine these two together, what we would have, the combined, combined, com, combined position of the risk-free asset and the put option on the assets of the company is equivalent to the debt holder's position or the creditor's position. So it's equivalent to a risk-free debt, risk-free debt L plus a short guarantee or put short guarantee or short put option short put option on the assets of the borrower with an exercise or strike of L. Now with that insight with that insight uh, we can set out this type of construction that the shareholders position the equity position is equivalent to a call option and if we were to change the time horizon to incorporate uh, the value what is the value of that shareholders position looking to the future then uh, we ins we can move from looking at the intrinsic value of an option intrinsic value of an option to when we look at a ex ante position or a forward looking looking position we can look at the equity as having a time value equivalent to that set out by black shoals so typically when we want to model uncertainty we can say the value of the shareholding is equivalent to the difference between the assets and liabilities where the assets don't have when we look at the shareholders position they enjoy a heads i win tails you lose type proposition so their exposure is uh, a positive one in that if the value of the assets fall below the value of the liabilities the shareholder uh, doesn't continue to absorb those losses he passes those losses on to the creditors so it's equivalent to a call option and using a time a time value paradigm or a black shoals paradigm we can model the value of the equity as being a call option in the same way as we would typically model the value of a call as being the difference between an asset and a strike. In this instance, the strike or the exercise is the liabilities. This is the fixed component. The liabilities are the exercise and the assets, uh, if you like, normal cumulative probability of D1 minus the liabilities E negative RT, uh, the normal cumulative probability of D2, gives us the value of the equity position. Okay, so that's a key insight. Uh, 
uh, developed by Merton, Robert Merton, in 1974. Okay, a uh, couple of things here probably stressing if the value of the assets then fall below the value of the liabilities at maturity, we're in a position of default. And that gives the shareholders heads I win or tails you lose asymmetric payoff. When A is less than L, the shareholder or the equity holder relinquishes their claim on the company's assets and they can walk away. And this implies that the shareholder enjoys a long put or the debt holder, creditor, uh, is exposed to a short put. Okay, so there the walk away option that the shareholder has is reflected by an obligation imposed on the uh, debt holder or creditor. So whoever's lending the money is exposed to a short put option. Okay. Now this this Merton insight has led to development of KMV model the commercialization of the Merton model and typically you can set out you can model default probabilities you can model the default of credit or model the the, the risk of non-payment so if you if you own if you hold a, a debt in a company you run the risk of non-payment but that non-payment occurs when when the value of the assets fall below the value of the liabilities. So we could construct um, a normal distribution here, so long as the values of the assets and liabilities are expressed in um, natural logs. And we could simulate the value of the assets over time. And if the value of the assets drop below the value of the liabilities, then we're in default. And so the probability of the assets falling below L then constitutes the risk of, of default and provides us with a very nice way of estimating credit risk. Now previously I had illustrated how we might generate this type of random walk um, type behavior. So we'll go to um, I had modeled, and this is consistent, again, the basic framework might be, we could consider something like this, that the, let's say we have a bank's balance sheet. So this is the balance sheet of the creditor, and they have lent out 100 euros, or 100,000 euros, or 100 million euros. They have borrowed. They have liabilities, their own liabilities are money that they have taken on behalf of other people. This tends to be uh, fixed. You can't really change this once you've borrowed. The bank must take in deposits to lend out and they fund themselves with 80, let's say 80 uh, euro deposits and then have a, a equity stake of 20. If the value of the loans, let's say the mortgages or whatever has been lent out, fell to 90, that's no problem, then the value of the assets are equal to 90. On this side of the balance sheet, what gives is the equity, and that would become 90. If the value of the loans fall to 80 because of default, etc., then the value of this side of the balance sheet is also 80, and what gives on this side is the equity. However, if we then subsequently fall to a value of less than 80, 70, then at this point it's no longer the equity that it becomes negative because that's a heads I win, tails you lose. It's an asymmetric type exposure. There's limited liability. It's now the deposits those deposits now can only be worth that's what's going to be affected unless there's a government bailout or some other third party and then you can see we're in default so this is what we're trying to model 